Hello there. What is going on, everyone? Today, we are finally doing the review I've been waiting for a while to do. Uh, and today, it is Street Fighter The Miniatures Game by Jasco Games. You may be familiar with the Angry Joe show. Angry Joe basically made this game course with a lot of help from other folks i'm not going to name off everybody on there but uh but yes through jasco uh this one was a i got this through kickstarter and it was a long time in the making there was a lot of lessons learned along the way and uh i'm gonna bring to you my review i've had enough time now to play this game and we're gonna kind of walk through first uh the basics of the game kind of how it plays and all of that uh let you get a look at it and then we're going to go with my full thoughts and we'll talk a little bit about this game, what I think, the things I like, the things I didn't like, and all of that stuff towards the end of the video. Also, if you guys are new here, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment on this or one of my videos letting me know maybe your favorite Street Fighter character or what do you think is the next fighting game that should be turned into a tabletop game. Because I would love to hear that because there is a Mortal Kombat version coming soon too, which I will probably back and take a look at. I don't know why I'm whispering to the camera. Anyway, uh, but yes, uh, so, so there's more of this coming if you do like what you see. Uh, but also I'm going to put links at the end also for the unboxing if you wanted to see like all of the characters. Because I picked up quite a bit. I don't think I went all in on this, but I got a lot of the stuff. So there's a whole, lot of, a whole lot more to take a look at beyond what I'm going to show you in this video. So with, with all that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at Street Fighter, the miniatures game. Street Fighter the Miniatures game is a beautiful skirmish game with these pre-painted miniatures where you're going to be moving around the board trying to reduce your opponent's hit points to zero, much as you would do in the Street Fighter video games. Uh, this game has beautifully detailed components that really make this game stand out. They all come fully assembled, fully painted, and just about all of the miniatures have some really nice poses and effects on them, as you can see here with Ryu's key blast and kind of swirling aura. I've already done an unboxing, so if you want to see a closer look at all of the minis, I will be putting a link at the end of the video as well, so be sure to check that out. Uh, you're also going to get these uh, cardboard cutout terrain pieces, and there's a whole large variety of these and these are going to decorate the board but also they're going to provide function because terrain in this game matters when you get uh, pushed or knocked into things it's going to do additional damage and that's going to be fun so let's take a look at some of the cards so each character is going to have a deck and a character card as well as their health and meter tracker this is going to show you how much health you have on this dial here on this side and how much charge or power meter you have on this bottom side down here. Now, I want to note there is actually a typo on this, on the version that Kickstarter backers were, were received. I'm not sure if the retail version or the second printing will have this fixed. I hope that they will, but there should be a zero on here, but there is not. So your character card is going to tell you how much your starting health is, how much your movement value is, as well as your ultimate ability, which you can spend charge to uh, fire off that ultimate ability once the game is kind of going. Uh, you're also going to have the backside, which just gives you some more information about your character. Uh, each of the decks of cards are custom built already, so you don't have to worry about trying to customize these or, or do anything special to them. There's no deck building mechanics. It's just you grab your deck and go. And it's really just really beautiful artwork on these cards, too. Very cool stuff. So let's take a look at how these cards work in combat. Now, basic attacks use a simple dice system. There's only one type of die in this game, and it's got hits. Uh, it's got single hits. It's got multiple hits. It's got meter, or this is kind of gets your charge meter to power super abilities. And it's also got block symbols, which are represented by a shield. Uh, everybody rolls the same dice. So if you're attacking, you're only going to really pay attention to the punches. If you're defending, you're only going to really pay attention to the shields. And most of the time, both players also pay attention to meter. So uh, we, depending on how many dice you're rolling when you attack, you'll roll that many, deal that many damage. Defender will roll some dice and see if they can cancel out some of your hits. One shield will cancel out one punch and however much damage remains will go over to the attacker but you're going to need to have cards to attack so let's talk about how we get these 
cards and how, you know, we start off with five, but there's different things you can do to trigger an attack. So at the start of my turn, if I'm Ryu, I have a movement of three, so I can go ahead and move one, two, three, uh, for example. Uh, I can move up to three. I don't have to use my movement at all, uh, but if I don't use it, then it will be over with. Now, um, you can move diagonally also. Orthogonal and diagonal all count as distance of one or move of one. Uh, from there, I have two actions that I can take. One action might be to draw two cards. You do have a maximum hand size of seven, uh, but drawing cards is an important thing to do. The, uh, the other thing is I can then play an attack card as another action. Uh, you have two actions you could, you know, you could certainly attack twice if you wanted to. Um, other actions are you can play certain cards that are non-attacks. You can play like event type cards, or you could also take additional movement for other action. Uh, that you could do, but most of your actions are going to be to either draw cards or to attack, and attack is probably the most common one. So what you're going to do is you're going to, when you're attacking, you're going to lay a card face down because your attack will be a surprise for your opponent, and then it's your opponent's turn to decide what they're going to do. They can either block, which is just going to give them two defense dice against your attack, or they could do something else like play a card to counterattack you, and then Zangief might, might play a card of his own. Uh, so let's talk about how the, the attack cards work and how counterattacks and blocking and all of that work. So when you choose a card to lay down, um, there are certain event cards and they're gonna say events. These are not attacks. These are going to be like specific things that do something. Um, and in some cases, there'll be responses that you can actually play. But most of these, they kind of say when you should play them and they kind of describe what they do. But I wanna talk more about attacks. There's different types of attacks. And the first thing we're gonna look at is just the anatomy of the card. Uh, well, first off, the range, how many squares away from your opponent you'd have to be for it to work. Uh, the attack dice, the number of dice you're going to roll when making the attack. I want to point out also that uh, you know, generally the dice are slightly skewed towards the attacker. You have like that double hit side and stuff like that. So even if it's only two attack versus two defense, there's still a pretty good chance that you'll get some damage through. Uh, also, you have a combo system right here. I'll talk about that more in a minute. Uh, we have the name of the card, any keywords that it has. Uh, then this right here, which is the type of attack. There is three different types of attacks. You have strikes, which are basically, you know, you're punching or kicking somebody. There are projectiles, which are ranged attacks. You'll notice that range tends to be a little different. And there's a third type, and these are specials. Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking, wait, isn't Ryu's you know, Hadouken kind of a special? Well, it kind of is, but in this case, a special is just a different category of attack. And the important thing about that is that these three attacks kind of make a rock, scissors, paper type of mechanic because your opponent, they could choose to block you, but they can also try to counter attack you. And if they decide to counter attack you, they're going to have a similar type of card, like we have Zangief's cards right here. Um, and... Uh, they can basically play their bottom card as a counterattack. And if they match the type of attack, like um, if it's versus a special, you're going to do something uh, special, like, and it basically will tell you what it does. So if they anticipate that you're going to go with a strike and they play uh, a strike of their own as a counterattack, it's going to negate your attack and maybe do some damage to you. So that's really, really bad. Um, and so, you, for example, reuse strike. He can play this uh, instead of attacking. If he's defending, he could like maybe play this card down uh, or, or play this card to you know to counter somebody else's strike. So right, Ryu might say, "Hey, you know what? I'm going to go with a strike. I lay this face down." Maybe Zangief uh, says, "Okay, well, instead of blocking, I'm going to counter." And he shows you a strike. You then flip it over and see if you uh, you know you reveal the card at that point. And if it matches, then great. If he if he you know chose projectile or you know chose incorrectly, then you know then it's a wasted card. Um, so then you will go ahead and you know, roll your attack dice. If he's not blocking, then he does no defense dice, and then you can go. Also, there are defensive cards which a person can discard to increase the number of dice that they're going to block with if they're going to just block. So a defender basically has a choice of block or try to counter. Now, or they could just do nothing. Uh, if they want to just just take the hit straight up, uh, and it's important to to talk about that because there are also bait cards, uh, and the bait cards are an interesting way to kind of um, 
basically you can you can play this card as if you were attacking and if they block you remove all of their uh, their dice and then you gain two meter uh, which powers up your specials uh, and, and and so everybody has bait cards and that kind of kind of keeps you guessing a little bit because while it's mostly rock scissors paper sometimes it's something special so it's rock scissors paper plus a little bit now uh, every character does have you know some projectiles some strikes and some specials and you might think, well, wait, somebody like Zangief, he doesn't have projectiles. Well, he, but he doesn't have projectiles in the game, but he does have some kind of ranged attack. So he does have some cards that are classified as projectile, even though he's not shooting a, a fireball or something of that sort. The other thing I want to talk about with attack cards is the combo system, which is actually really deadly and makes this game very, very interesting and tough to predict because there are some buttons here on the left and right side of each card that kind of resemble buttons you might see on an Xbox or PlayStation controller. And there are four different colors, blue, yellow, green, and red, and different positions. And these are the combo system, basically, that allow you to potentially link one card into another card, into another card, and so on and so forth, uh, up to however many cards you have in hand that meet the requirements. So how do they work? Well, we kind of go from left to right. So if this is the first card you play, and it deals damage, not only do you then get to consider your keywords, like you might be able to throw somebody, reposition them, knock them back into terrain, which if they, you knock somebody into terrain, they also take an extra damage and, and destroy the terrain, which is fun. Um, but also you, uh, you, you can then potentially play another card and you have to look at a certain uh, other cards. Like for example, these two don't go together, right? You go, you're going from left to right. So this one doesn't, you know, this one has to be a starter because it has none of the bubbles filled in. But on its right hand side, it ends with a green, which means you could chain a green into it. So in this case, I could take this hurricane kick, which starts with a green, but it has to be in a finisher because it doesn't chain into anything else. But this is a nice little two card combo. So if you had both of these in your hand at the same time, I, I could play this one uh, for two damage. It, if it hits, uh, then I will uh, be able to uh, you know, link the Hurricane Kick into it. And since it has a throw keyword, actually, this does negate defense dice. So as long as I don't whiff my, my dice, it'll, it'll do damage. Then, of course, I can start a Hurricane Kick after that. And then my opponent won't be able to counterattack anymore. All they can do is block and hope that uh, they can withstand the damage. And, I, and in theory, if I had another color here, I could keep going and going and going. And there's, and there's all different types of card combinations here, like the, the Fierce Hadouken uh, can, be, can basically be triggered off of a yellow or a blue, but it can only can tr trigger another blue. So you could actually do a Fierce Hadouken into a Fierce Hadouken uh, into uh, a, a regular Hadouken, you know, so like into a... A quick Hadouken because again the red to red right there and blue to blue you know so if you happen to have enough cards in hand you could play maybe three or you know and, it, and it's hard it's easy to do two combos and sometimes you'll get three but it's hard to do more than three I have never gotten a four combo actually to work uh, although I've gotten close one time where like I thought it was going to work but you also have to be within range because each card has a range and some of them will have dash keywords like this one has charge where you can move uh, before you you potentially have to be within range of somebody or you can move you could dash up to somebody if it says dash charge you actually will push them back and sometimes a card will get attacked dice for each space they were moved by charge because you'll actually push them while you're moving them which is fun because you can push them into terrain and then they take even additional damage for that um, the other thing that is also important is sometimes you'll see a yellow die at the symbol and that means that it can be an EX attack so you could spend one meter of your charge to add an extra uh, attack die to that which is very very fun and so there's a lot that goes on with this but it kind of boils down to you know when your opponent is a certain distance from you like are they going to uh, you know if I've got Ryu here and I've got Zangief here um, and Zangief has to say, well, is Ryu going to use a projectile or is he going to try and do like a dash type of strike at me? And, it's, and, it's, and it can be tough. If I'm really far away, then Zangief is like, oh, he's definitely going to projectile. So it's going to be easy to predict and counter. But, uh, but if I'm really, you know, if I'm like one, two or three spaces away, sometimes it's harder to predict. And, uh, and that's something to keep in mind. And of course, the more you play against these certain characters, the more you're going to learn their decks. All right, you guys, that's Street Fighter kind of in a nutshell. So now I want to talk about what I like and what I don't like and like my whole experience. So um, 
as a summary, because I'm going to get into specifics, but as a whole, I want to say this. Um, it's a licensed game, uh, and sometimes licensed games aren't always that great. And I realize there's some hypocrisy in me saying that because I review a lot of Star Wars games, and of course they're all licensed, right? Um, but but not all licensed games end up really kind of hitting it home, you know? Uh, and, and this one really surprised me. Uh, I didn't expect for this one to be as good as as it ended up being. Uh, I expected it to be very basic. I expected it to be kind of just selling the Street Fighter name and the Street Fighter characters. And look, I, I love the Street Fighter games. I'm not that great at them. So I thought like, hey, tabletop, maybe I can actually beat somebody if I don't have to worry about it because I'm getting old. I don't have that quick hand-eye coordination as much anymore. Uh, but, but you know, I like I, my favorite fighting game of all time was Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And, uh, and this, obviously, you know, we don't have the Capcom stuff, but we got Marvel Crisis Protocol for that. Maybe we'll get some, some Capcom crossovers and stuff someday. Who knows? But, but no, uh, but so, like, this, this hits a lot of nostalgia for me. There's a lot of characters in here that I grew up with, uh, going back all the way to Street Fighter II, which was one of the first fighting game that I ever played. So I thought it was just going to be a nostalgia trip for me, but really, it really impressed me. Uh, I really like the card system. I like the combo system. I like the rock, scissors, paper, kind of the guessing and the, and the kind of, you know, psyching people out. And I'm far away, but it's actually a strike and I'm dashing in. So you thought it was a projectile, but it wasn't. Or, you know, I was concerned. I was sure it was a strike, but it was a special. And so, like, it, it keeps you guessing a little bit. So there's definitely some mind games that go on in this, uh, in, in this game. So it was better as a whole than I thought. Um... There are some problems with it, too. And so I'm going to talk about a few of the things that could use to be improved. First off, the wait. It was a very long time. So if you backed this on Kickstarter, you know what I'm talking about already. It was about three years or so. It was, I think, the longest kick, longest I've ever had to wait for a Kickstarter. Um, granted, I've been using Kickstarter for a long time now, so I'm, I, was, I, wasn't like, I wasn't appalled at the wait. But I was starting to get a little annoyed. Um, so, like, like you know, it, and if this was your first Kickstarter, you were probably furious. And I know a lot of people are not happy with having to have waited so long. Okay. Um, you know, there's not much more I can say about that. It is what it is. Uh, I'm glad to finally have it now. And, and, and I guess the question I have to ask myself is, was it worth the wait? For me, it's a yes. It was worth the wait for me. That might not be the same for everybody, though, because it is kind of a, a brawling, beat em up kind of, you know, skirmish type of game, and it's not the only game that does that, but I like the way it does it. So maybe it was worth it for me, maybe not for everybody else. I really love it, and it's also licensed, so you have good gameplay plus a license. To me, that, that makes it worth it, but, uh, but there was also shipping fees that were very, very expensive, so the whole logistics of, like, hey, there's... You know, you have to back now and then pay for the shipping like three years later and you feel like you thought you were already done with it. That, you know, I think that that whole process could have gone better. And I think it will for future games. I think there was some, definitely some lessons learned along the way. Now, onto the game itself. Um, there were some misprints uh, that obviously is a, is a problem. You know, the little, the little charge meter on the dashboards didn't have the zero on them and they gave you like a, a sticker on the website. Um, that's a problem because, like, who has just sticker paper laying around, you know? So, like, you know, I'm more likely to just, you know, consider the space before the one is zero or draw one with a Sharpie or something like that. So, like, that's that's a little bit of a bummer. That could have been done better. Um, I'm surprised, you know, like, at, at some of these typos. There's some decks that are that are, have, like, multiple typos. Certain characters have multiple typos in their decks, and you have to print out new cards and sleeve them in there. Um, and so, like, that could be a pain in the butt, especially if you paid a lot of money. This was a couple hundred bucks if you wanted to get everything. I think it was, like, uh, upwards of, like, 300 if you went all in. Uh, and then, plus shipping on top of that and a three-year wait. So I can understand, you know, some people having uh, problems with having typos and things like that on the game. Um, but this is also the first printing. I'm sure they're going to correct all that if you are thinking about coming back for, like, a second printing if they do another Kickstarter of this. I think they will. I'm not 100% sure if they are going to do that or not. Um, other things that I think could use some improvement, the the, di the dials, that you, you, the life trackers and key trackers. I talked about the, the typo there. They're also kind of flimsy, right? Like your, your life counter can like spin really, really easy and 
you know, and, and, and I know that some people have made like apps where you can track it on your phone or your iPad and things like that. I think I'd probably just rather, rather use two D10s than those trackers. Um, just because they are kind of flimsy and you're like, wait, was I at 23 health or 22? Because it's now it's in between. Like that, that could have been done better. That's something I would improve on for, for next go around. Um, but, but other than that, um, the only other criticism I have is that if this version does go to retail, it's not going to have all the classic Street Fighter characters. And that could be a problem for like a retail release. Because as of right now, you need those stretch goals to have at least... Like, to me, and this, uh, let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. To me, um, the, the, you know, the Dalsim and Blanca is, are, like, all the characters from Street Fighter 2 are the iconic characters. And, and so you kind of need all of them. But you got only, like, half of them in the core game. And the other half are in the stretch goal box. And if those end up staying, like, Kickstarter exclusive, then they'll never make it to retail. And I think a lot of people will feel shorted if they can't get those in retail. So I hope that they make those available uh, at some point, whether it's standalone expansions or, or, or whatnot, or maybe they make a, a new new edition, a second printing deluxe edition, like and call it Street Fighter II Champions Edition. Ah, just like the arcade game, like, you know, something like that. I think that that's something that they can improve on going forward. Although I do understand why they made the choices they did because you can only have so many characters at a certain price point and they wanted to have the characters that represent like kind of like the 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 broadness of play style because if you would have just went with only the heroes you might not have gotten you know some of the you know the the high flying shenanigans that Vega can bring into the game or or maybe if you know you wanted to have Zangief in there because you want to have the big brawler but you also have want to have the nimbly bimbly characters too so you have a good balance of different character types and different play styles in the core game, but it still doesn't feel complete. Okay, so I think those are my only main criticisms, and, th and th those aren't too scathing. The biggest problem is the typos and the flimsiness of the dials, but I can get through a lot of that with using dice instead. Um, oh, and I do have one more. I do have one more, um, and that is storage. Uh, because while you got all of the stuff in, in all of these boxes, there was not an easy way to store all of this stuff once you have like all of the decks pulled out of their cellophane wrappers, and now you got to sleeve them all, now they don't fit back in the box the right way, and now you've got like all these different expansion boxes, and you want to have them all in one kind of nice, simple storage solution. It's, it's like a storage nightmare. So I went out and I bought all kinds of, spe like a special box that holds like, 90 decks or, or 80, 80 magic decks sleeved and stuff and it it fit and it held all of the decks uh, I got and I got uh, this the stretch goals and I think I got three of the expansions uh, for extra characters too so I've got a lot of the different characters so I've got a ton of decks plus you have the bosses and all of those decks got a lot of decks of cards and it cost me a lot of money to, to sleeve them all and I decided after the first playthrough I'm like okay I like this game I'm gonna want to shuffle these cards a lot I'm going to want to sleeve this stuff. So adding more expense to a game, you know, that's already great. But the fact that I wanted to organize it kind of is a good segue into the things that I did like and the positives. Because um, let's talk about those positives. First off, the, the IP Street Fighter, it's awesome. I mentioned that already. The, the other thing is I like the combo system. I like the card, the combat system. Um, you know that that it's you know the rock scissors paper mechanic of uh, of projectile strike or or special. Um, you also have kind of like supers, and then you have your ultimate ability. So you get these really awesome attacks that can do a whole lot of damage. Um, and, and games can be quick too. Like I like the fact that games can be over. Uh, you know, from setup to tear down. You know, like when you start playing, a game can be over in about ten minutes. You know, can drag out a little bit more than that. Um, there's a lot of variance, a lot of rules variance as well, uh, because one of the things, a big, big, big plus for this is it's not just a two-player game. It's a two- to six-player game, and realistically, you could probably go higher than that, um, but re but it's, it's kind of designed to max out at around six players, and you can do it any way you want. You can do teams, you can do uh, free-for-all which is great. Free-for-all is really, really good, especially for, like, three-player games. And it's got cool balancing modes for that. Like, if you're getting ganged up on, you start to get more and more defense dice for each time that you've been attacked uh, by different players and stuff. So it's like, why are you ganging up on me? You're just making it easier on me. So you're kind of more incentivized 
to you know to spread out your attacks and it keeps the game a little bit more interesting uh, there's teams there's a boss mode so you can do like uh, many versus one or one versus many um, so like there's a lot of really cool variants and different ways to play a game like this which is also very very fun but I just like the fact that it also plays well multiplayer because how many times do you show up and again if you're going to have this big board it's not that big but it's a decent size plus all your you know your your car, your box of cards for all your decks and then your boxes for the minis it can take up a lot of table space if you're bringing it to a public place you want to be able to have more than just two people there you know if you want to be able to get like five how many games play you know how many brawl type games play three or five this one does just play free for all or or do a boss and do like maybe two bosses versus four players or something like that there's all kinds of cool things like that you can do and so i like that it's very versatile and kind of blends itself into however many people you have um and the terrain i like that the movement matters because of the terrain your movement matters because like every ability has certain um certain things that take movement into consideration. Like if you can knock, knock back somebody into a tree, they take an extra damage. All that extra damage really matters because there's only so much health. You know, most people only have 20, 20 health. So if you get knocked into two or three things, you know, boom, that's like a, a huge chunk of your health that's gone that didn't need to be gone. And it's all because of movement. Uh, I've played other games like this before where movement did not matter and you ended up just like, once I'm close enough to you, then I can just hit you with all of my attacks. But like to make combos work, combos is another reason why movement is really important because I could, you know, like hit, I could hit, set up this combo and all of a sudden I got the great closer, but the great closer is a ranged attack and the one I did right before that I charged into you and now I'm not at the right range to finish my combo. So movement and positioning on the board and board location is huge. And if I'm not, you know, in the right position or if I'm, I somehow got behind you and I can't now back up to be able to hit, uh, you know, the ranged attack, uh, that matters too. So I, I'm pleasantly surprised with how the movement system works and that it's not overly complicated, but it's meaningful. And, uh, you know, and that was a really nice uh, kind of a, a breath of relief for me. The, the components, the miniatures, the miniatures are A++++. Plus, 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 plus. The miniatures are absolutely amazing. Um, my, my only complaint is that I had one that got broken in shipping, but I did contact Jasco. They're going to send me out another one as soon as everybody, all the regular shipping is done. Uh, I'm already queued up to get a replacement. So that was very hassle-free. I just had to send them a picture. So customer support seems great so far. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's fun. I really enjoy the game. I think you, uh, you might want to consider checking it out. Um, granted, because it was a Kickstarter, you might have a hard time getting it right now, but just stay tuned as soon as they come back to Kickstarter. I know that there's another Mortal Kombat version of this coming back. I'll be, I'll, I'll be tracking it. I'll be promoting it. You'll, you'll, you'll find out about it here. You can hop in my Discord, find out about it there. There's all kinds of message boards and, and website stuff, website news. If you're in, into following like Jasco on social media and stuff like that, you can find out more about it then. Um, and, and I think that's probably going to be uh, about it. Um, I, I wish there was a better storage solution that would just allow you to say, hey, which character do you want? Oh, here's the miniature and the deck and everything you've got, like, all in one thing. It, it'd be a big, complex kind of storage solution, but I would love something like that. Um, and I, I've kind of homebrewed my own by using, like, the, the stretch goal box, and I put, like, all the miniatures in there, and I couldn't fit all of them in there, but I put a lot of them in there. Uh, and then I put the, the base box, and I put, like, all the, the terrain in there. I wish there was a better solution for the terrain, too. And, and, and it is what it is. It's, like, this foldable, like, cardboard terrain, and, like, it kind of does the interlocking system. But some of them, you kind of, almost like you have to glue and because they don't just stay together very easily. So I'm like, but if I glue them all, they're not going to fit all back in the box. So I feel like I, like you got like all this great stuff, but I just don't have the room to kind of glue all this other terrain and, and keep it together. So I'd rather use some of the own, the terrain I have already for other miniatures games in, in this, in, like, with this, as opposed to the terrain that comes with it. So I may end up doing that, but we're going to see. I, but I, I really enjoy the game. Uh, it's definitely going to be one of those that I keep. And, uh, you know, as I'm getting more and more games, I really have to be kind of like judicial on what, what stays and what goes. And this one is definitely going to stay. 
All right, guys, that's going to do it for my review of Street Fighter, the miniatures game. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Big thanks to my patrons as well for continuing to support this channel. You guys make it all possible. If you want to learn more about how to support the channel, check the links in the description below. Thank you so much for sticking with me. And as always, have a great day.